So let's take a look at first time. So it really is the most important option factor um, when we're trading options. So it basically time value is the extrinsic value of the option. It's, it's the premium that a rational investor is going to be willing to pay over the current exercise value known as the intrinsic value based on its potential to go up in value before expiring. So this probability is going to always be greater than zero. Thus, an option is always worth more than its current exercise value. So, you know, it's, it's really the, the risk premium the option seller charges the buyer. So as a buyer of an option, <clears throat> you're going to be willing to pay additional money for that option because it gives you more time for your trade to work out. Now, as a seller, you're going to want money for that option that you're selling because that's risk. So the higher the expected risk, which really equates to volatility plus time, the higher the, the premium. So when you think of trading uh, and trading, time equals risk. So if you're selling an option to an option buyer, you want to price in that risk that you're taking. So you're going to ask for a you know, larger premium, bigger price for selling an option. Now, conversely, time value can also be thought of as the price the investor is willing to pay you know, for that potential upside, for that additional time to let that trade work out and give him or her that potential upside, whether it be long a call for an upside move or long a put uh, for a downside move. So time value or time decay is, you know, decays exponentially to zero at expiration. So with general rule of thumb, you know, it's going to lose a third of the value during the first uh, half of its life and it really accelerates two thirds in the second half. So when you get into about 30 days out, that's when time decay really starts kicking in. So as an option gets closer and closer to expiration, uh, moving its price then requires an increasingly larger movement in the underlying price uh, of your security to offset that time decay that's hitting your option premium if you're you know, long a call or long a put. So when you look out over the time curve, uh, you can just kind of dramatically see how this time uh, affects your, your option. So here's your typical time curve. And so when you're you know, out 120 days, 90 days out or 120 or further out, your time decay is pretty flat. I mean, it's a gradual little move. You can't even see it, but it's going to really start then accelerating once you get to 30 days from expiration. So, you know, it's going to go down, you know, gradually, and then it really starts to decay. And the thing that we know, the weeklies get even more accelerated. And what we know is that, you know, a value, the option will go to zero. Time will go to zero. So you can think of an option kind of like a coupon that you get at a store, right? You've got, you look at it, it says redeemed by such and such date. And if you don't, then you can't use that coupon and take, take advantage of that discount. So that's the same thing about an option. It's got time decay is eating away at that particular option and it's going to be at zero. So it's the decaying asset if you're long options.